This is Dr. Delahousie, and I'm making a video for my MAE 4344 class, and I want to talk about uh, a few ideas in uh, the area of planning and scheduling. And in particular, I'm going to be looking at something called the critical path method, which is a method for taking a project and all of the activities for a project, putting them in the right order, sorting them out, and uh, making a schedule that you can then work with and try to live with. And so let's talk about why all of these things on this page refer to both projects, activities, and would lead to a schedule. So first of all, a project would be a set of activities. And activities would be things that uh, take time, uh, they take resources, maybe equipment, they take maybe people. The critical path method is a way mainly of just dealing with time. Many of the software programs that will uh, work with the critical path method will also you know, do the time portion of the project, but they'll also look at resources, people, money, those kinds of things. So let's first of all learn the critical path method. And one of the reasons I want you to learn the critical path method and uh, what it does and actually how to do it by hand for a very simple system is because anytime you're using software that's very powerful and it's really important to you you ought to have a at least some sense of what it's doing and how it works so planning and scheduling relies on activities there are lots of ways to represent activities and people who teach the critical path method will uh, look at uh, activities in several different ways. This one is called the activity on the arrow view of activities. So over here um, in this little block I have an activity. The activity is the arrow. The activity takes seven units of time and from now on we will just use the term weeks for time. It might be days, it might be hours, it depends on the project. So this is an activity that takes seven weeks to complete uh, the activity arrow is bounded by a one with a circle and a two with a circle. The numbers in circles represent events or points in time. And so in this particular activity, uh, this ev uh, event one is the start of this activity. Event time two would be the end of this activity. Uh, activities don't stand alone. They typically interact with other activities. And the uh, basic idea is I often have to finish one activity before I can start another activity. And so using this same kind of system for represent act representing activities, over here I have several activities showing up. And for this conversation, we're going to use a sort of a strange name for activities, but I think it'll communicate okay. The name of an activity will be the number of the event that starts that's at the beginning of the activity and the number of the event in time that ends the activity. So this activity that has a duration of six weeks we're going to name it activity three four. Now in reality let's say we're building a house uh, this activity might mean rough in the plumbing and the foundation before we can pour the concrete and do lots of other things. So it might be called rough in the plumbing. And uh, other events showing up in this little block would be event four or five with a duration of two weeks. And that might be pour the concrete. But I can't pour the concrete until I've roughed in the plumbing. So this shows a precedence relationship where activity three, four must precede activity four or five. It also must precede activity four six and activity four seven. So activity three four is the predecessor or must precede the other three activities. In this block down here we have a uh, representation of another relationship between activities. Activity five seven cannot start or must be preceded by activity two five which will take four weeks and activity four five which takes two weeks and so I cannot start this one activity until I finish these two activities. <clears throat> and so now we can look at this fairly simple activity diagram where again 
the activities are represented by the arrows. The duration of the activity is given next to each arrow. And the name we'll give to these activities, we'll just refer to the numbers. So here's an activity 1, 2 that uh, has a duration of 7. Activity 2, 5, a duration of 4. Activity 1, 3, a duration of 2, etc. And we can see here that all of the activities starting at 4 cannot start until activity 3, 4 is finished. We can see that this activity at 5 cannot start until these two activities are finished. The activity at 7 cannot start until these two activities are finished. And uh, event 8 is basically the end of the project where all activities have been finished. Now, in this very simple, well, let's see, let's talk about the amount of time it takes to finish a project. Assuming all of our activity durations are deterministic and absolutely correct, then we should be able to look at various paths through this activity diagram. And uh, there will be some paths from beginning to end without ever looping or repeating yourself. There will be some paths that are long and some paths that are short. Okay, the amount of time that it takes to finish the project is the length of the longest path because I have to finish all those activities on that path uh, to consider the project finished. I cannot finish it in the amount of time given by the shortest path through the diagram. That longest path, which is the shortest time that I can finish the entire project, is called the critical path, therefore the critical path method. In a simple example like this one, I can very quickly just run through all the paths and uh, find the critical path, and then I'll know how long the project takes. So I could look at this path across the top and say that's a 7, plus 4 is 11, plus 7 is 18 weeks. Then I might run across the bottom, 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 3 is 10. So far, 18 is the longest path. I might go here and go 2, plus 6 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 7 is 17. So far, 18 is the winner. Uh, 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 3, 11, plus 3 is 14. So far, 17 is the winner. Uh, sorry, 18 is the winner. 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 5 is 13 plus 6 is 19. Okay, it looks like the longest path is here, here, to there, to there, adding up to 19. Now, if you look down at my chart down here, you will see that I've set up some stuff that goes to 19. So I've already looked ahead at this problem, obviously, uh, and already knew before I started that this was going to be a 19-week project. Now, if the project is a lot more complicated, then you can't just look exhaustively at every path. Um, it would take too long. So let's look at the math that's usually implemented inside a computer program for the purpose of, of finding the critical path and then finding a few other things about the project as well. So I will erase uh, my marks and let's look at the process of identifying the critical path and we're going to do that by making a table and our table will list all of the activities and again in a real project we wouldn't be necessarily using numbers although the computer program internally would have numbers we would put names like uh, prepare the foundation dirt work uh, build the foundation borders rough in the plumbing and any other utilities, pour the concrete, uh, lay the outer wall uh, studs and those kinds of things. Whatever those words might be, we're just going to go with the numbers here. I've written down every activity and I've written down the duration for every activity in this table. And now we start the process of doing the critical path method essentially the way that's done inside of a computer program. And what we want to do is work on this early start column. When is the earliest that I can start any particular activity and finish all the other activities that would come before it and have enough time to finish it? We're going to do that by putting 
uh, time markers. And so over here at event one, I'm going to put a, a zero there because it's the beginning of the project. And every activity coming out of event one can be started at time zero. So I'm going to write down zero and zero because I have two activities coming out of one. Now I'll move to here and say that activities starting with the event 2 can start as early as 0 plus 7 equals 7. And I'll put a 7 here. I'm staggering the numbers in this chart just so that I have room to write. Activities coming out of event 3 can start as early as time 2. And so I'm going to write down a 2 and a 2 because there are two activities coming out of three. So far it's fairly easy. Activities coming uh, beginning at five. I can't quite get there. I can do this arrow. So activity two five could start as early possibly as 11. I'm sorry, activity starting with five could start possibly as early as 11. Uh, but we don't really know that yet. And so let's look at activities starting with 4. 2 plus 6. Activities starting with 4 can start as early as 8. We'll put down an 8 and an 8 and an 8 because there are three of them. Now, 8 plus 2 is 10. I can get to this path, everything starting early, as early as 10. But I can't start activities emanating from 5. I can't start activity 5, 8 at 10 because I would not have finished this path. So for this one, for activities coming out of 5, I want to write down 11. 5, 8 can start as early as 11, not 10. Activity, uh, activities coming out of 6, 8 plus 5 is 13 so that would be a 13 down here activities coming out of 7 can start as early as either 8 plus 3 is 11 or 2 plus 5 is 7 and the answer will be 11 and then arriving at the end we can either get there by 11 plus 7 is 18. 13 plus 6 is 19. Or, let's see, 11 plus 3 is 14. And so the earliest we can arrive at event marker 8, which is the end of the project, is the 19. And so I'm going to put the 19 right here. And down here for finish, I'm going to put 19. And now I know it's going to take, at, uh, at a minimum, 19 weeks to finish this project. Uh, and I understand the earliest time that I can start each one of these activities. If I were a uh, non-procrastinator and I wanted to start everything as early as possible. Now I'm going to erase these numbers and we're going to work our way backwards and fill in the late start column. So if I'm a procrastinator, now that I know my target to finish is out at 19 weeks, when's the latest I could possibly start every activity yet still finish the project on time? by the end of 19 weeks. And I answer that by working backwards. And so activity 7, 8 can be started as early as 19 minus 3 is 16. And I will write that one down, 16. Activity 6, 8 could be started as early as 13. And I'll write that one down, 13. Activity 5, 8 could be started as early as 12. 19 minus 7 is 12. Activity, let's see, it doesn't really matter which ones we do. 
but we have 4 7 next. So 4 7 could be started as late as 16 minus 3. That particular task could start as late as 13. I write it down. And activity 4 6 could be started, and that was a 13, could be started as, let's see, that's interesting that. Yeah, 16 minus 3 is 13. I'm not sure why that gave me a dot. Let me see if I can clean that up a little bit. That's a 13. And I'll clean this up a little bit. I'm still getting used to this pen system. And that's a 13. So, activity 4, 6 can start as late as 13 minus 5, which is an 8. So, 4, 6 with an 8. Activity 4, 5 could start as late as 12 minus 2 is 10. Now let me remind you something. I've got three events coming out of 4. The early start for all events coming out of 4 was the same. The early start for 4, 5, 4, 6, and 4, 7 was 8. Each of these events though coming out of 4 could have a late start at different times. I need to write down the 4, 5 value of 10. <clears throat> now let's see, let's do one more where we, where it's easy. 16 minus 5 is 11. So activity 3, 7, the latest I could start it is 11. And now I have a choice. When is the earliest, sorry, when is the latest I can start activity 3, 4 and still finish everything else on time. And the latest I can start it would be 8 minus 6 is 2. I'm going to write that down and now let's talk about it. If I start this activity at 2, I arrive here at 8, which allows me to start this activity at 8, which is the latest I can start it and still reach the end on time. If I had a larger number here, it'd be a number larger than eight. I might be able to finish these two activities and their successors. I don't know that I've said the word successor yet, but uh, the following events. Okay, so late start here is a two. And that is activity, uh, let's see. Let's see, eight minus six is two. I wrote down the wrong thing here a 2. Then activity 2, 5 is easy. 12 minus 4 is 8. 8. Activity 1, 2 is easy. 8 minus 7 is a 1. I put a 1 there. Then activity 1, 3 is the smaller of these two numbers, minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And that is comforting that I've reached the beginning of the project and one of my late start terms is zero. Uh, that doesn't guarantee I haven't made any mistakes, but if neither of them had been a zero, or if, uh, if they had both been positive numbers or either of them had been negative numbers, I'd know I made a math mistake. All right, I've now identified the latest that I can start the project and now I can, uh, of each of the events, now I can define a term called slack. Slack is the amount of extra room I have in time on when I would do a project. So, uh, and slack is the difference between the late start and the early start. So activity has a slack of one minus zero is one. Activity one three has zero slack. There's no flexibility on when I schedule that task. Eight minus seven is one. 2 minus 2 is 0. 11 minus 2 is 9. There's a lot of slack there, and I might be able to put that to work. 10 minus 8 is 2, 0, 5, 1, 0, 5. Now, the def now that I've done all this math, and I think you can see how this could be computer programmed, the, uh, or programmed into a computer, uh, the definition of the critical path 
is all activities that have a slack of zero. There's no flexibility in how I schedule them. So activity 1-3 is definitely on the critical path. So let's go ahead and highlight the critical path. So activity 1-3, according to this, is critical. Activity 3-4 is critical. Activity 4-6 is critical. And a zero here, activity 6-8 is critical. All activities on the critical path have zero slack. I have no extra space in which to schedule them. Other activities off the critical path have slack to varying degrees. It's interesting that activity 3-7 right here, not on the critical path, has an awful lot of slack and that might be helpful. Uh, let's just talk about computer software for a little while. To do this using computer software, we will need to identify a complete list of activities. We'll need to give them names. We'll need to use something in the software to identify which events are predecessors to other events. Or another way to do it would be to say that uh, these three events are successors to this event. Some programs use the terminology and tool of predecessors, others use, others use successors, and uh, Microsoft Project would use both. You can identify the uh, dependencies using either successors or predecessors. <coughs> you identify <coughs> activities, durations, relationships, you put all of that in, it'll do ma the math to figure out the critical path, and uh, it will generally highlight the critical path for you. And then there's some decisions to be made. <coughs> We've got 19 weeks according to this math if all of our durations are absolutely correct. There's another method called PERT where we actually define three numbers for duration. Instead of saying we know this is going to take four weeks, we say something like with a high probability uh, it'll get done somewhere be between uh, three and six weeks with the sort of uh, best guess of four and it'll use statistics to work out a path and it'll use pro probabilities to work out a path. The critical path methods assumes that I know what I'm talking about when I talk about the durations of an activity. Now, what if I want to make this project take less time? There is no point in shortening a task that's not on the critical path. Uh, putting more money and people into task 2-5 to shorten it is of no real value okay on its own but shortening tasks on the critical path might very well be of value and so here's the basic idea what if I take task 37 that has a duration of 5 with a slack of 9 and what if I take some of the people off of that one and some maybe some of the resources off of that one, which could have been worked in parallel with these, and I move it to these activities that are on the critical path. And so maybe I make this one take, uh, let's say, nine weeks. And by increasing the time it takes to do this one, I might be able to reduce that one to a 4 and I might be able to reduce that one to a 3 because I've moved people, resources, machines, and money around. Now, uh, just making this one increase by 4 doesn't necessarily mean I can go uh, 2 shorter here and 2 weeks shorter here, but let's just pretend that is true. I would have to make real judgments on how uh, reducing uh, resources here would let me speed these up. When I do that, I've changed the length of the critical path by four, maybe, because I've shortened this one up by two, I've shortened this one up by two, let's see if you can see what I'm pointing out. So I've shortened three, four up by two, and I've shortened four, six by two. Maybe this turns into a 15 question mark. Why the maybe? 
because it's possible that I have shortened these up so much and lengthened this up so much that this path is no longer critical and that maybe this path uh, down the bottom becomes critical. Let's do a quick check of, check of that. 2 plus 4 is 6 and 3 is 9 and I think that was a 6 is 15. Now remember we had an 18 up here. I do believe 7 4 is 11 and 7 is 18. So nope I haven't shortened this to 15. Okay unless I uh, so but I can get it down to 18 by shortening up events on the critical path and then I would have if I could shorten this path by one the critical path by one then I'd actually have two critical paths an 18 and across the top would be an 18 and then to make the project go any faster I'd have to shorten up both critical paths and I either have to put uh, move uh, money and people around to do it or I've got to find extra money or whatever but I think you can see how knowing the critical path gives you the information that you need about why the project takes as long as it does and what you have to do to go about shortening up the overall project. Now, with all of this done, then we could by hand go through and draw what's called a Gantt chart. Now we've got some options on how to, on how to draw a Gantt chart. What I'm gonna do is what I call a, 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 an early start with slack Gantt chart. So activity one, two can start as early as zero it has a duration of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to put a bar there, and it has a slack. Uh, so I'll put a little dashed line there of one. And so activity one, two could start as early as time zero, but I can move it around in this little window that has a slack of one. Activity one, three early start at zero has a duration of two and a slack there is no slack at all so I won't draw any slack activity two five could start as early as seven and has a duration of four. One, two, three, four. oops my pen is getting a little bit awkward here so one two three four duration but I've got a slack of one, so I'll put another bar here, put a little dash in there, so that activity can float around anywhere within that space. Activity three, four has an early start of two. It has a duration of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it has no slack. Three, seven has an early start of two and a duration of five. One, two, three, four, five. And it has a slack of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the solid part of activity three, seven is what is where I would place it to start it early and I can slide it around anywhere within that period if I'm going to keep its duration the same. Um, I don't think I'm going to pause this but my telephone is ringing I'll be back. Okay I'm back from that phone call uh, it was a long enough phone call that I'm having a little trouble remembering exactly where I ended up except I was on my way to producing this semi-ugly looking Gantt chart that shows every activity starting as early as possible but also highlighting the slack which activity 3 ha 7 has okay and so the 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 next discussion I want to have is how would we take something like this and put it into a piece of software and so uh, I'm gonna end this video and I'll start working on another video whose purpose is to take this particular project uh, this particular activity from this diagram, put it into a uh, program that does critical path scheduling, show you a little bit about how to use that program, and then I'll open up one of their sample files, which is a lot more complicated than this one, and just let you see the kind of views and the kind of information that's available. So that will end this video.